Good morning. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored we can. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful name of Jesus above every name you've given to us, the body of Christ, the church, that we go forth in this life ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our nation in the name of Jesus. We speak peace to our country, decree and declare our, our nation, the United States of America is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our leaders, that each one of them hearken unto you in the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind him our country, you can't have it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for the nation world, that every nation as a gospel preached as a witness. We pray, Lord, you raise up labors. You said the harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. Pray ye, therefore, Lord, of harvest, you would send for the labors are. So we thank you, Lord, people are answering the call to God and taking the gospel out to all the world. We thank you, Lord, that every day more believers are being baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking other tongues, and being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Christ. And Lord, I thank for anointing me today. I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of your word and led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, listen to our Bibles here to Matthew chapter 15. This is a pretty exciting testimony we have here about a lady's determination to receive a deliverance for a child. Now here in Matthew chapter 15, begin verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried, saying to him, Have mercy, me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed to the devil. But he answered not a word. And his disciples came to sought her and said, Send her away, she crieth after us. Besought him, and the scripture goes in verse 24. But he answered Jesus and said, I'm not sent but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not me to take children of bread and cast dogs. She said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs that, which fall to the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said, O woman, and great is thy faith, be it thy will. And her daughter is made whole from that very hour. Now let's go, here, let's go here and read here from the Gospel of John. We read this here the other day in John chapter 5. Now the scripture says here in verse 6, John chapter 5, verse 6, When Jesus saw him lie, and knew now he'd been a long time in this case. He's saying them, will thou be made whole? And then here, uh, go back a few pages, come to Luke chapter 5, please. In Luke chapter 5. Now the scripture says here, in verse 19, And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in and cause him all to, they went on the housetop and let him down with his tie in, in the midst before Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And then here, and we'll read the testimony we have here in the book of Matthew. Sorry, I got you jumping around, but it's going to help. In Matthew chapter, when they're all knitted together, these verses. In Matthew chapter 25. Now the scripture says here, in this verse 20, uh, let's go to verse 25. Now the scripture says here, And I was afraid, and went hid thy talent in the earth. And though lo, Thou hast is thine. And the Lord answered him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, know thou reap where thou sow not, and gather as thou hast not sown. Now here in this verse um, 21, the Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful for a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. Enter thou in the joy of the Lord. You know, Jesus said to the man there that was crippled, Will thou be made whole? You know, it's kind of shocking, you know, when you first hear scripture like that. You think, well, you know, wouldn't everybody want to be healed? You know, I noticed that in ministry and being a Christian that, you know, not everybody wants to be successful that's in the body of Christ. You know, I was kind of amazed when I first heard 3 John verse 2, where it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Is the soul prosper? I was thrilled with that. I mean, you know, at the time, and I don't mean this disrespectful, but at the time, I just recently got saved. I sort of just felt lucky to be saved. I didn't know there was any benefits. And when I first heard that scripture, I was thrilled. I mean, inside, my, it was just like I was getting turbocharged with a verse of scripture. And I began to share that with all kinds of people. People saved, people weren't saved. Just thrilled to know that God wished above all things that I prosper. Scripture said, beloved. I wasn't too sure if I was God's beloved. So my Bible I had then, I put a line there, word beloved. I put my name beside that verse, Jesse. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell is a soul prosperous. So I started sharing that with people. And I got all kinds of flack from people. You know, they weren't real thrilled about learning about God wants you to be prosperous. But nevertheless, I mean, one time on my radio program, I teach, taught on that verse of scripture for over a month. 
fact, it started out, it was one a month, and actually one a whole year. And I got all kinds of hate mail in, the, in, the, in my mail, letters people sent me. And some of them were real big letters. You know, they, they spent a lot of time writing it, how they're trying to prove that God didn't let you be prosperous. You see, there's always, there's always op opposition in your life as a Christian. You could call it persecution. You could call it suffering for the Lord. But nevertheless, it's going to come against you stepping out with God's promises. Now, like we've often said, you want to love everybody. Don't get in any you know, fist fights over this or anything. But the idea is that don't let it affect you. Now, you got this woman here who's got this demon-possessed daughter. Now, think about the trauma she's gone through. This is an easy situation. This is terrible. It's like hell at home. So she hears about Jesus some way, and she comes to where Jesus is at, and she gets to the disciples, and the disciples are bothered with her. They go to Jesus. The disciples go to Jesus about, you send her away. You know, she, she won't leave. Now, they're, they're trying to get rid of her, but she won't leave. And you know, that's the kind of determination you want to have, that you don't let anything dis distract you or sidetrack you from receiving from God. There's something you've got in your heart. And God put it in there. It's, I know the Holy Spirit, but God put it in each believer. And I believe every person in this world has it. It's, it's, a, it's a passion inside your heart to be who you're supposed to be. Not just be who you are in Christ Jesus as a believer. But there's something God, a gift, a talent that God put in your heart. You know, God gave this one man five talents. He gave this other man two talents. He gave one person one talent. Well, you know, maybe me or you or someone else may have just one talent. But we don't take that one talent and, and, and not use it. See, how, how, does, how, does, how does happiness and joy come? When you fulfill the purpose of what you're supposed to do in life. God puts something inside your heart. You can't let anything or anyone stop you from pursuing God to do what God told you to do. And he wants you to do. He put this in your heart. You know, Apostle Paul taught about how he didn't let anything stop him from going on to the Lord. In Philippians chapter 3. That he, he laid aside those things in the past. Forgot about them. Got over them. Some people, you know, they don't get over their past. They have this story that you just want to tell you when they see you. Especially if you're preaching some new area. You know, you ministers know what this is like. You know, you, you just preach this message on whatever it was. Let's say prosperity. And someone comes up to you after service. Maybe you're in a, a visiting church. You're visiting this church. You've been called there to preach or asked to come and preach. Or maybe you're just doing a seminar somewhere. There'll be somebody or some ones who will come up to you and they'll have a reason why they're not prosperous or that God doesn't want them to be prosperous or healed or whatever you taught them. And so it's just like, uh, you know, they, they carry this spirit with them. They don't have a spirit of faith, but they have a spirit of doubt and unbelief. And you see, why are people unhappy? They're not fulfilling. They're not seeing any progress in their life. And as you, you know, as a believer, you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues. The more you pray in tongues, the more you're going to get it built up spiritually. The scripture said there, but ye beloved, in Jude, verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves, your most holy faith, praying the Holy Ghost. Some people, all they can see is problems. All they can see is the bad that's going on. They, they never see the good. They watch the news and the world events and things going on, and they get so discouraged. But you could feed on God's word. And, and, you know, listen to some minister gets you all built up and jacked up in faith and confidence and determination. This woman here that we read about here that Jesus told about by the Holy Spirit here in Matthew chapter 15, she's determined that she's going to get her daughter delivered. I mean, if Jesus has got this power that people have said he's got, she's going to get her daughter, daughter delivered. So no matter how she's treated, she refuses to act on offense. Offense will keep you from going on for God. It gives you an excuse not to go on for God. Maybe someone took your money. Maybe some church took your money. Maybe some pastor took your money. Ran off with some other woman. Ran off with some other guy. And people hold that to not go on for God. That's too bad what happened. It's terrible. But the nevertheless is, those are things we got to forget about and go on for Jesus. And let anything stop you from going on for God. That you're actually going to pursue God no matter what happened. You know, there was this salesman one time, and, you know, salesmen used to have to go house to house and do cold calling. You know, as a kid, they'd come and knock on your door. Anyway, there was this farmer, and he had, uh, you know, he was getting struggling to get along. And he kind of, he had these bib overhauls he wore, and he had one big pocket inside here. And that's where he kept his money. And my uncle always kept his money in his front pocket. He was a farmer, and he kept it in his right front pocket, you know. He didn't want anybody to come behind and pick his pocket. So anyway, so this salesman is selling pots, wearers, 
the cookware, you know, gets a cold call to go out to his farm. And so he does this presentation. He brings his, actually his manager came with him. I want to see how he did. So he does this presentation, presentation about these pop, you know, cookware, the cookware they got. Went in there and cooked a meal for him and showed him how it worked. And so the house is all cluttered and nothing's finished. There's walls that's, you know, two befores you can see, studs. And anyway, so this guy just keeps on plowing on, giving us his, I started to say testimony, but a sales pitch. You know? And so uh, finally the farmer said, well, you know, I have just enough money to buy this, right? And kind of proudly patted his chest there where his money's at in his bib overhauls. But, you know, my wife's always wanted a kitchen. And she's always wanted a bathroom. You can tell by looking, you know, none of these things are done. And when all these are reasons, all these excuses, why not to get it? And he said that, you know, the sales manager said, I was watching the person I'm training. I'm thinking, what are they going to do with this? Because I don't know what to do with it. You know, I felt sorry for the guy who didn't have anything. And so the salesman just getting started said, you know, this would be a, this wouldn't be a better time for you to buy this because you got the money on you. He said, you know, he actually got that guy to buy this. And we walked out of the house thinking, this guy's wife, she don't have a you know, decent kitchen, she don't have a decent bathroom, she don't have the wallpaper on, but nevertheless, we got this soul. As a believer, there'll be all kinds of reasons for you not to do what God wants you to do. But, you know, like he wants you to prosper and have good success. And you're going to hear from Christians and preachers and everybody else, it's not God's will. Just love everybody, don't get a cat fight about this, but just let it roll off of you. Don't let it penetrate you. Stay with God's promises. Because criticism is going to come. You live in the world, the people, are, they are always want them venting their criticism and what they think should be done and should be done. And many people live with excuses of not to go on. But our goal is that we're going to receive from God. That's our determination. And when we feed on God's word, it's like rocket fuel to your faith that builds you up. It gives you confidence and determination. Now, maybe somebody in your life, if you're blessed of God to have somebody like this, that your wife, your husband, somebody, or a minister, that always encourages you to go on for God. I mean, this pastor, and he was very, he was always teaching on success. And that's, you know, that was his name, his ministry, and him, that's what he taught on. And so he's doing this series in his church on success. And, and uh, after service served with one day, some man walked down to the front, the podium there at the platform, and he said, you know, you teach about success all the time, and, you know, it's just not working for me. I don't have a car, and I just got this little ratty apartment I'm living in. And, you know, I don't have any talents. I don't have any college education. I can't earn do anything. And the pastor's just here and listen to this whole, whole laundry list of how this man can't do anything. So the pastor, this comes to the pastor. Thank God for God. Huh? This comes to the pastor. The pastor says, can you wash a car? Now, that was kind of insulting to this man. Well, you know, everybody thinks they can wash a car. Yeah, yeah, I can wash your car. He said, well, Monday, Sunday, Monday, you come to the office, I'm going to talk to you. So the man showed up at the office, the pastor's office that Monday morning, and the pastor said, I want you to write out your phone number on this piece of paper here, and I want you to, I'm going to have the, my secretary, you know, the one lazy worker at the church, or man who it was, to run off copies. And he said, you see, look out the window, he said, you see that big apartment building is like 22 stories or so. You see, I want you to go with all those cars there, and I want you to put a note on that car that you wash cars. You like to have your car washed, I'll come here and wash it for you. All right, and what actually is the pastor going to do is have, him, have them bring the car to the church and wash in the parking lot, but it's adjacent to the church. Well, you know, so this guy said, okay, you know. So he rode his bicycle over, that's all he had, an adult man rode his bicycle with it and started putting these, you know, flyers on windshields, you know, which some people's got a BMW. They wouldn't like that, would they? But anyway, he did this. And he started getting all kinds of calls. So finally, he had to hire some college kids to help him wash cars. So finally, he got his own, enough money to buy a piece of property and build a car wash. And he became the largest car wash in Texas. It started out with a man swore he didn't have anything. You know, we all have something. Now, we can bury it or we can use it. And God wants to use it. And you notice that Jesus said the man had joy and success that used what he had. See, how do you have, you know, peace and joy and victory and happiness in your life? Is by fulfillment. By doing what God told you to do. What, what you have in your spirit, what you have in your heart that God planted inside there. You know, some people live their whole life and never did achieve their dreams that they had inside the heart. Don't let anyone or anything rob you of what you've got in your spirit. It means how old you are and you're just now getting started or you've wasted your whole life seemingly to you, it's never a better time to start than right now. 
Maybe it's the program that you're trying to exercise. You want to lose weight or you want to just get your bills paid. It starts out with something like that. Take those things that you have a desire for and write those out. Put them on a piece of paper where you can see it. That, and one thing, the scripture teaches, write the vision. And not only that, but you can also say it's written when Satan comes around. You know, you can you know, tell him you wrote it, but nevertheless, it's written there. I start out that I wanted a job. And I wrote it in front of my Bible that I had at that time. The place I, I wanted to work at, the date, and I dated it, put some scriptures down, signed my name to it. And apparently I spelled some of the words wrong in there, because one time I was coming to church, I was actually doing some work at the church there, and the service was getting ready to start, and I had my Bible in the front row. When I came up, there were some people looking at my Bible. And they were looking, and they were all, there was some girls there, and they were giggling and pointing at words. Look how I spelled this, look how I spelled that. Well, you know, I knew what it meant, and, and God knew it meant. It takes a creative mind to, to really spell a word in several different ways, doesn't it? Anyway, so, but you know, God got that job for me. Now, this is impossible. This job isn't going to happen. But it's what I had a desire in my heart. That's the kind of job I wanted. And you know, God put that there. And he, he let me keep that job by his grace and mercy until I went to Bible school. Now, there was all kinds of problems associated with every day. And there was times you just want to walk away from the job because of the problems. You know, the, maybe some of the stuff wasn't true. And plus, I got in trouble for things I did wrong. But nevertheless, God has mercy and grace. And we call upon God and he helps us get out of these situations. But this woman has got this daughter that's all messed up by the devil. She's not going to take no for an answer. She has the determination, determination and confidence about her. She's going to get this. And see, this is what Jesus likes to see in your life. He wants you to see that you're so determined, you're going to receive those promises of God's word. There'll be everybody seemingly sometimes that come against you. But you don't let that affect you. You don't let that penetrate you because you know in your spirit that this is God's word. This is what God said in his word. He wants me to prosper. He wants me to have good health. If he didn't want us to be prosperous, then we wouldn't be an heir of Abraham's blessing. God wants us prosperous. And you're looking through the Bible and find people that didn't prosper. You can look through the Bible and find people that did prosper. I mean, think about this. Job had 6,000 camels. 6,000. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, just having one cow is one thing, but 6,000 camels? And it was God that gave them to him. And we have the same God he did. But we've got a better covenant, and we've got all the promises of the Old Testament and all the, all the new. We have a better covenant established on better promises. And Jesus sees this man that's been crippled, and he said, Will thou be made whole? You see, you have to learn as a Christian, you're all excited about God's word and you're thrilled about prosperity and healing and health and speaking in tongues and everything else. And you come across some other Christian and you just unload on them. You're, you're, so, you're just like a little puppy. You're so happy. And they look at you and have excuses why this has passed away. This is not for us. You never know. You know, prosperity could ruin you and everything else. And they bring these horror stories, real drama situations to you about something that happened to somebody else. They're not thrilled. You see... You have to realize not everybody wants to be happy and not everybody wants to be successful and not everybody wants to be healed. And you know, if you've witnessed, not everybody wants to be saved. So what can we do? We can pray for those people that don't want to be healed, that don't want to be prosperous and don't want to be saved, that their eyes be opened up, that they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and all that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to them. So we don't put them on shelf and think, well, I'm not going to be back. No, we should begin to pray for them. God, open up their eyes. And I thank you, Lord. Is there anything I can do that you let me know? And he'll let you know. But see, the man with one talent, you know, he's, he's fearful. Why are people fearful? Used to be because of how this is going to look if I mess up. What will people think of me? What will people say about me? You know, I told everybody I'm going to Bible school. Well, not everybody, but everybody in my town I run across, even strangers, if they got talking to me, I say, hey, I'm going to Bible school. I'll be leaving, you know, here at the end of August, 1st of September. And we're told all kinds of people, and even Christians let them know that God led me to go. And then I got to Bible school, and that's, that's a venture, you know. But I got behind on my rent, and they wanted to evict me from my apartment, and they got, they got behind the utility bills, and they shut off the phone, and shut off the electricity. Got all these problems going on. Well, you see, the, the thing comes to you is you want to quit, you want to give up. But see, in the midst of a storm, there's always an answer to this problem. And, you know, by listening to God, you'll get the answer what to do about it. Even sinners get answers from God. I mean, think about the things you and I got from God long before we got born again, that God let us know about something. You know, there was this car dealership in, in California, and they sell, sold Lexus. You know, they're pretty cool cars. And... Um, so the, this, then this earthquake in their area there, and the dealership 
you know, the people wouldn't come, they're afraid to come, and not, you know, they're just scattered for emotionally and mentally for a long time going through this. You, can, you know, it's just terrible. So the sales team got together and they're trying to figure out some way they can sell these cars. Can't anybody come to the dealership? You know, they might as well close down. But one of the salesmen decided he'd take one of the demos he had. He's got one, has got all the bells and whistles, you know, just got all the bling to it. He drove it out to a wealthy neighborhood and started talking to people over there by the golf course. Said, hey, would you like to take the car for a test drive? Uh, I don't know. No, come on, take the car for a test drive. So they got in this new Lexus. And a guy, you know, gets in and starts driving and comes back, whoa, that's a nice car. Now, this man that did the test drive, he already had a nice car. But, you know, this is a, this is just a nice car. This is a new car. And there's something about new that makes everything different. And you know what? You've got a new covenant. And you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you've got the New Testament. And in there, you're to rule and reign in Christ Jesus. Now, what you have may be okay, but you know there is new. And you want to receive all that God has in his word. You don't want anything, anyone or anything to talk you out of receiving from the Lord Jesus Christ. He came that you might have life and have more abundant. Not just eternal life. Not just everlasting life. As, if that was the only miracle we got, that's the greatest. It kept us from going to hell. But he gave us abundant life. All that the Father has is yours, he said. Jesus said in Luke chapter 15, verse 31. But you have to realize you have to go to take it by faith. That you're going to have faith is going to have some, some obstacles here. It's going to come against you. And it'll give you an, an excuse that you can't do it. You're too old. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you don't have a degree. You didn't use your degree. Your degree didn't amount to anything. I mean, just anything that you'll bite into, Satan just uses different bait to see what you, he can catch you on. And get your mind thinking about it and give you an excuse. See, the man said to the pastor, I don't have any talent. Can you wash a car? Well, yeah, anybody can wash a car. Well, he became very wealthy because someone had a God idea. He had ability to be able to do that. And to thank God for the Holy Spirit showing the pastor what to say. You see, the answer will come. In the midst of a problem, in the midst of a trial, as you seek God, as you keep pressing on in, that you're not, you're not going to quit. You're going to keep on going on. In, in here, in the Word of God is my answer. In here is the life. I'm going to hang on that promise. See, promises get you all built up. They bring confidence and determination. So there's a promise in here that belongs to you. They all do. But there's one in here that's really going to change your life. Judy Osteen told me it was Psalm 118. I shall not die, but live and throw the works of the Lord. And she grabbed all that one promise and used it. Among other promises she had, that one registered on her. That's the one she needed. But if you quit and give up, see, that's what the devil wants. When something happens, you want to ask yourself, you know, what was Satan intended? Did he think I'd do this? What was his objective to get me to do? It was to quit and give up. No, you know, we all need rest, but we don't quit. And times refreshing comes to praise the Lord. So listen to CDs and preachers that get you all built up and keep feeding on the Word of God night and day. Just keep that word coming to you in your car, in your house, wherever you're at. You're playing the word. You're listening to it. You're praising God. You're praying in tongues. You're worshiping God. And you're just looking for a way you'd be a blessing to someone else. It's just start right where you're at and not let anybody or anything keep you from going on for God. And God will see to it. It was this child that he was born and he had these defects. And the doctors, the experts, everything said he's never going to walk. So, you know, the, bless the kid's heart. And this is years ago. And the dad built him a box. And he put the child in a box and, and uh, so he could set the child up and strap him in there so he couldn't fall out. So the parents have to run out for something. So they take the little boy and jack him up and, and put him towards the window. So you can see outside. Now think about how torturous this is because the kid's watching other kids play baseball and everything else, and he's in this box. Dad thought he was helping him out. You know, well, okay. Well, you know, this went on for a long time, and the dad just you know, had to make the box bigger. So it came the time that the parents came home, the boys on the floor. Oh, they run over and grab him up, you know, and come to find, they thought maybe he just fell, but no, he tried to get out of the box. And his parents scolded him, said you could have broken a limb or something, worse could have happened to him. They put him back in the box. They kept putting him back in the box, but every time they'd leave or go in the other room, he'd get to rocking around this box, and he'd roll out and fall on the floor. Oh, they scolded him everything. 
And one day they came home, and he was standing between the doorway, holding on to both sides of the, of the you know, frame there, holding himself up. Oh, did they get upset. He kept working on us, working on us. One day he started walking. He became one of the richest real estate tycoons that there were in Silicon Valley. What happened? He said, you know, I had to see myself out of the box. And one day, I burnt the box. You know, sometimes you just got to get rid of what's trying to hold you back. To keep you from going on from God. Because Jesus would never hold you back. He wants you to press on. He said so in Philippians chapter 3. Read that chapter. How Paul would press on and keep on going. A night and day and a day of journeys off. I want to encourage you. Don't let anybody, me or anybody else, keep you from going on for God. Love everybody. Don't get fussed over this stuff. Just do your part by walking in love. But no matter what you're faced with today, you've got God. And he takes a problem and turns it into a miracle. This is what God does. Father God, I pray for my dear viewer today. I thank you, Father God, there are, they have determination by the Holy Spirit, confidence of the Holy Spirit to go on for Jesus Christ. And like all robbers always said, something good is going to happen to you today. And it will to all of us in Jesus' name. Everything is going to change for the better. Everything's going to work out for our good because God promised us it would. So we thank God for Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28. We stand upon that in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for my dear friend here today. I thank Lord they're healed and delivered in Jesus' name. I pray for my dear pastor, people I know and people I don't know. I thank you, Lord, you're ministering in their life in Jesus' name. And their ministry will be far greater than it ever was before. And we give you all the praise and glory that you build the church, a triumphant church, a moral than conquerors in Jesus' name. And I speak peace to our country in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you haven't got our website, I want to encourage you to do so and get our healing scripture sheet, divine healing scripture, and other things. You know, ministries, thank God for all the ministries we have today. They have excellent websites and YouTube and everything else to be a benefit to you. You're going to find a ministry that really gets you built up in God's Word and keep feeding on those messages that there is. If you have a prayer request, you can go to our website at jesserichministries.com. You know, there's like three questions there. Your email address, obviously, I can email you back. And also, if you're not getting the daily devotion, a teaching from me, if you'd like to get it, then sign up for the Daily Devotion. It's all free. If you give me your, your cell number, then I can text you the Daily Devotions, or excuse me, um, Daily Message I sent out in the morning. If you'd like to have it, it comes out like 7 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to be woke up, you know, that's when it comes out. But nevertheless, it's there for you. And then like us on friends on Facebook and share it with others. You know, give me a heart or something here. Till next time, it's Pastor Jess Richmond. You stay encouraged. And remember, Jesus is always, and that means now, more than enough.